Haba, otherwise known as B10, although technically it's not a vitamin nor an essential nutrient, is an organic white crystalline compound that's manufactured for both skincare and supplement products. It's also found naturally in brewer's yeast, organ meat, mushrooms, whole grains and spinach. Paba can absorb ultraviolet rays, especially UVB rays, which are associated with sunburns and DNA damage. It was thus a key ingredient in sunscreen starting in the 1940s, but later linked to allergic skin reactions in some people, which led to it losing its status with the FDA as a recognised safe and effective ingredient for this purpose. Even after losing this recognition, there has never been an official ban on PABA for use in either food supplements or beauty products, neither in the USA or the UK. And PABA, though now rarely found in cosmetics, can still be readily found in food supplement form by reputable brands such as Now Foods, Source Naturals, Healthspan, G&G Vitamins and many more. I've personally taken PABA supplements as a part of a B complex and I experienced a flare-up of my eczema around my nose. Uh, when I stopped taking the B-complex supplement, it calmed down again within a couple of days. So this was either coincidental, or maybe it was a change of weather or face cream that contributed to the flare-up, or I'm an anecdotal example of PABA causing skin issues. But that's purely anecdotal, so let's put that to one side for a moment. So if it's not banned, and the only observed negative effects were skin rashes in certain individuals, what is PABA actually good for when it's consumed as a food supplement? Well, interestingly, and in conflict with my own anecdotal experience, PABA in supplement form is said to actually help with skin-related issues related to skin hardening, tissue buildup, and discoloration. The clinical evidence for this benefit remains very thin on the ground, however, and I could only find a couple of very loosely connected clinical studies that inferred or concluded any benefit in this regard. One of these studies took 467 people with scleroderma and found that 90% of those who received potassium PABA supplements experienced mild, moderate or marked skin softening compared with 20% of a control group. However, this study was performed over 30 years ago and other studies show little to no effect of PABA on skin softening. So as I said, very thin on the ground. Another interesting supposed benefit of PABA is the, that of darkening grey hairs. Studies in the 1940s and 50s found that taking PABA at daily doses ranging from 200 milligrams to 24 grams led to hair darkening and helped grey hair return to its original colour. It's important to note though that research found that their hair did become grey again after participants discontinued the supplement. What's more, even though PABA was shown to darken grey hair in early studies, this effect has not been studied recently. Some researchers concluded that PABA should not be taken for the sole purpose of darkening hair due to its unknown side effects, and certainly not at the maximum level that was uh, taken during those studies. I did some more scouring across clinical research papers and publishing platforms and found that very few other studies contain PABA. So ultimately, the few benefits it's known for are very thinly researched and PABA's downsides are equal in their level of study and investigation. So in summary, still very little is known about PABA in general. We know it has downsides and potential side effects, but we also have some weak signals that it can help with specific conditions. So unless you're taking PABA for one of those specific reasons and have exhausted more heavily researched or credible alternatives to solving a health-related issue, then taking PABA may actually be more harmful than it is beneficial. However, every individual is different and the effects of supplements, even those that are heavily studied and understood, vary from person to person. So whether you take PABA or not is really a personal decision and is very much a trial and error process considering a lack of clinical data. The very least you can do if you're looking to trial a PABA supplement is use a reputable brand. So at least you'll be taking what it actually states on the packaging and not inadvertently damaging your health with unknown contaminants or rogue ingredients. In the description of the video below, we've highlighted some reputable PABA offerings if you want to check them out. So there you go. I hope this video gave you a little more insight into PABA and its potential benefits and downsides. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and subscribe using the link beneath this video. And don't forget to also hit the bell symbol too so you're notified whenever we post new health and wellness videos. Thanks for watching.